How do meteorologists classify thunderstorms? There are several classifications of thunderstorms, single cell the smallest type of storm system. Single cell storms form from a convective loop of warm updrafts and cool down drafts. They usually form the weakest and briefest rainstorms. Multicell A storm system formed from two or more storm cells. Supercell the largest and most dangerous type of storm system. And one which is often associated with tornadoes. Supercells develop in massive cumulonimbus storm clouds and are characterized by nearly vertical. Unsuppressed updrafts and precipitation falling at a nearly horizontal angle. Because the air currents are not suppressed, they tend to continue building in strength for hours. Squall line A line of cumulonimbus storm clouds reaching up to 600 miles, 965 kilometers, long. What is a wall cloud? Wall clouds can be warnings that a tornado is about to form in a bank of cumulonimbus clouds. As a mesocyclone expands and gains strength below the cumulonimbus clouds, it begins rotating as warm, humid air moves upward and condenses. Convergence causes the gathering wall cloud to rotate cyclonically. Though slowly compared to the tornadoes it could form. Storm chasers who observe such wall clouds know that they can form full-fledged tornadoes within an hour's time. Who are storm chasers? Storm chasers are scientists and amateur storm enthusiasts who track and intercept severe thunderstorms and tornadoes. Two reasons for storm chasing are, one, to gather data to use in researching severe storms and two, to provide a visual observation of severe storms indicated on radar stations. In addition, television personnel will chase storms to produce a dramatic storm video. Storm chasing can be an extremely dangerous activity in which strong winds, heavy rain, hail, and lightning threaten one's safety. Individuals who chase storms are trained in the behavior of severe storms. Roger Jensen 1933 to 2001 is generally considered the first person to be an active storm chaser. A self-trained weather observer and professional photographer. Jensen spent 50 years recording data on tornadoes as well as thunderstorms. David Hoadley, 1938. Is also considered a pioneer in the field and founder of the first newsletter on the subject, Storm Track. The first scientist who became a storm chaser was Neil Ward. 1914 to 1972 who worked for the National Severe Storms Laboratory in Norman, Oklahoma and is considered the official father of the storm chase because of his credentials When do thunderstorms occur?
in the United States thunderstorms usually occur in the summertime. Especially from May through August. Thunderstorms tend to occur in late spring and summer. When large amounts of tropical maritime air move across the United States. Storms usually develop when the surface air is heated the most from the sun, 2 to 4 p.m. Thunderstorms are relatively rare only in far northern and coastal New England, as well as along the Pacific coast. Florida The Gulf states, and the southeastern states tend to have the most storms, averaging 70 to 90 annually. The mountainous southwest averages 50 to 70 storms annually. In the world, thunderstorms are most plentiful in the areas between latitude 35 degrees north and 35 degrees south. In these areas there can be as many as 3,200 storms within a 12-hour nighttime period. As many as 1,800 storms can occur at once throughout the world. Lightning performs a vital function. It returns to the Earth much of the negative charge the Earth loses by leakage into the atmosphere. The annual death toll in the United States from lightning is greater than the annual death. Toll from tornadoes or hurricanes 150 Americans die annually from lightning and 250 are injured. Who are some of the unluckiest people when it comes to being struck by lightning? S. Park Ranger Roy C. Sullivan, 1912-1983, survived being struck by lightning seven times between 1942 and 1977 This Virginia Ranger was hit once in a car, once in a truck, once while fishing, once while camping. Once in his own front yard, once in a ranger station, and once while on top of a lookout tower. Years after his death, he still holds the dubious honor of being the human lightning rod. In another peculiar case, a Midwestern family has had numerous members struck by lightning. One woman had been struck by lightning twice in 1965 and 1995 her grandfather was killed by a 1921 lightning bolt while her great-uncle was also killed in the 1920s, her nephew was temporarily blinded when he was hit. And she also had a cousin who was less seriously injured while holding an umbrella in a storm. Can a lightning stroke cause you to burst into flames? No, being hit by lightning will not make you combust, but it can leave burn marks or singe clothing. What is a mesocyclone? A mesocyclone is the vortex of air usually between 1 to 6 miles, 2 to 10 kilometers. In diameter often found within a supercell or other large thunderstorm with cumulonimbus clouds. Wind shear resulting in abrupt changes in wind direction or speed in the storm causes. Air to circulate in a rolling fashion parallel to the ground. An updraft can then orient the swirling air vertically, thus forming a vortex perpendicular to the ground.
What are some benefits of lightning? One of the biggest benefits of lightning, believe it or not, is that it causes fires. We usually see fires as a bad thing that destroy plants and property. Lightning starts about 12% of all forest fires in the United States. With over 60% of these in the Rocky Mountains area and fewer than 2% in the east. Most lightning started fires burn fewer than 10 acres of growth. But botanists and other scientists have long known that. Fires are beneficial to keeping forests and grasslands healthy. Many plants, indeed, drop seeds that can only germinate after they have been burned. And fires clear away old growth and allow new plants to thrive. Another benefit to both plants and animals is that lightning strokes convert gaseous nitrogen. And too into nitrates, NO3, by adding energy to the air, which causes nitrogen atoms to bond with oxygen. Nitrates are a vital part of the food chain, plants need them to survive. And animals get them by eating plants or other animals that eat plants. About half the world's naturally occurring nitrates are created by lightning. The other half is generated by bacteria living inside plants such as legumes. Scientists estimate that 200 billion pounds, 91 billion kilograms, of nitrates are created every year through the action of lightning. In other words, without lightning, plant and animal life on Earth would be severely depleted. What is the speed of sound? The speed of sound can vary, depending on air pressure and, more importantly, temperature. The conventionally accepted speed, which is useful for estimating the distance to a lightning stroke, is about one mile for every five seconds. More precisely, sound travels at 740 miles per hour, 1,191 kilometers per hour. At one atmosphere pressure when the temperature is 32 degrees Fahrenheit 0 degrees Celsius. Sound travels faster through water and many other media that are denser than air. In general, because the temperature of the air cools as altitude increases. Sound is refracted upwards and away from people on the ground. Thus, measurable sound decreases the farther away one is from the source. On the other hand, the stratospheric layer of the atmosphere increases. In temperature as altitude increases, thus refracting sound downward. What is a derecho? Pronounced derecho, this is large. Long lived thunderstorm characterized by strong wind downbursts. Can lightning travel through the ground? Yes. When lightning reaches the ground, 
the electrical energy can travel through the ground from some distance away. If you are standing nearby, the energy can then enter through your feet. This is also how multiple people or animals can be injured by a single lightning bolt. What is a fulgurite? When lightning strikes sandy soil, the soil melts into a glassy stone called a fulgurite. These stones can appear branch or root like. Almost as if the bolt of lightning has been fossilized or petrified somehow. The glassy material in the fulgurite is known as lechatelierite. A substance that can also be formed by meteors striking the ground. One of the largest fulgurites ever found is housed at Yale University's Peabody Museum of Natural History and is about 13 feet, 4 meters, in length. Has there ever been a tornado in Los Angeles? Yes, Southern California, including Los Angeles, have experienced weak tornadoes on occasion. Fortunately, no deaths have yet been reported in the state as a result. On May 22, 2008, two tornadoes touched ground in Riverside County near San Diego. A tornado warning was also issued in Los Angeles that same month. Causing minor damage to homes in the suburb of Inglewood. Los Angeles County has officially seen more than 30 tornadoes since 1918. What is a beaver tail? A beaver tail is a colorful name for a broad, flat, descending cloud that can be seen during some rainstorms. Beaver tails usually form outside any areas of falling precipitation. And they tend to swirl inward toward a wall cloud. What is an acoustic shadow? An acoustic shadow is kind of like a mirage, only involving sound instead of light. Differences in temperatures at varying atmospheric layers causes sound waves to refract or bend. Also wind shears and the absorption of sound on soft surfaces can contribute to the effect. The result can be that sounds coming from a particular source might not be heard by someone standing fairly close by, while other people located farther away. But in a direction where sounds are being refracted, can hear the sound. A famous example the consequences of acoustic shadow is often cited from the U.S. Civil War. During the 1862 Battle of Seven Pines in Richmond, Virginia, Confederate General Joseph Johnston told his commanders that upon hearing gunfire from soldiers being led under Major General D.H. Hill, he would order Brigadier General W.H.C. Whiting to send in an attack on the Union's flank. However, because of acoustic shadow, 
Johnston was unable to hear the battle noise and the flank attack was not sent in when it was needed. The Confederates subsequently lost the battle. Are there certain times of the day when tornadoes are more likely to happen? Tornadoes can occur at any hour of the day, but 40% of them strike between 2 o'clock and 6 o'clock p. M. The danger of a nighttime tornado is that people are often asleep and unprepared for when the warnings are sounded. What is an indoor thunderstorm? When the humidity is very low inside a building, static electricity can easily build up as people walk across carpeting, dragging their feet, and then touch a piece of furniture, a doorknob, or some other object. When this happens, a discharge of about 40. 000 volts can occur in even a small spark jumping from your fingertips. Running a humidifier inside the home during winter can usually keep these indoor thunderstorms. A rather exaggerated term, at bay. How many people are killed in the United States by lightning? The U.S. total from 1959 to 2003 is 3,696 deaths. About 60 people die each year from lightning, about 300 are injured annually. The highest death rates are in Florida, 425 killed between 1959 and 2003. Making it the most dangerous state to live in when it comes to lightning injuries. Below is a state by state listing using the most recent data from NOAA. At any one time, how many thunderstorms are occurring? As astronauts orbiting our planet especially over the night side can attest. There are thunderstorms happening all over the place, all the time. On average, scientists believe there are about 2,000 active. Thunderstorms happening at any given time, day or night. This gives us about 16 million thunderstorms every year. Is it true that being hit by lightning can have health benefits? There have been some documented cases where people who were legally blind were hit by lightning and indeed, found out afterwards that they had regained their vision. There are also a few cases where victims of lightning bolts found out that they did better on intelligence tests afterwards. Indeed, some have even claimed that they have gained psychic abilities.
During what part of a thunderstorm's duration is there the most risk of being struck by lightning? Statistics show that more people are hit by lightning strokes toward the end of a thunderstorm. This is not because there is more lightning at that time. But rather because people get too anxious to go outside before the storm is completely over. What should I do when a tornado approaches? Try to get to the lowest level of the building, unless you are in a mobile home or outdoors. In which case you should seek a sturdy and safe shelter. Many mobile home parks have a centrally located tornado shelter these days. Go to the center of the room and hide under a sturdy piece of furniture. Stay away from windows, hold onto the leg of a table or something else stable. And protect your head and neck with your arms. If your home has a basement, take shelter there. If not, interior bathrooms are usually the sturdiest rooms in a home. And you can protect yourself further by climbing into the bathtub. What did NASA and the U.S. military discover about triggered lightning? During a couple of space launches, NASA learned that ionized exhaust from rockets can trigger a lightning stroke if rain clouds are nearby. This happened during one of the Apollo missions, though with no dire consequences. More infamously, in 1987 an Air Force rocket launched from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida was hit by lightning. The rocket was destroyed at a cost of $162 million. Scientists have known about triggered lightning for a long time. And they sometimes attach copper lines to small rockets to attract lightning for research purposes. Lightning caused by rocket exhaust though, is an unintentional side effect. Are there other ways that thunderstorms can be described? Classifying thunderstorms can be a rather subjective practice. But meteorologists do give different types of storms other names based on how they are formed. Including, mesoscale convective systems a large, non-frontal thunderstorm. This classification includes mesoscale convective complexes. Which are enormous storm systems that can cover several U.S. states at once and last for half a day or more. Air mass thunderstorm a common, short-lived, relatively unorganized, and fairly small storm. Sea breeze thunderstorm cold frontal storms that form as wind blows in toward the coastline. Do tornadoes always turn counterclockwise? As a rule of thumb, a tornado in the northern hemisphere will rotate counterclockwise. 
while those in the southern hemisphere twist in a clockwise rotation. But, as with any rule, there are always exceptions. Anticyclonic tornadoes, rotating clockwise in the northern hemisphere, have occasionally been observed. When they do, they are typically weaker twisters associated with weak storm cells or sometimes appearing as water spouts. One of the strongest anticyclonic tornadoes was observed in 1998 near Sunnyvale, California. Even rarer but still possible is an event when a supercell generates both cyclonic and anticyclonic tornadoes. Does lightning ever strike twice in the same place? Lightning can and often does strike in the same place twice. Since lightning bolts head for the highest and most conductive point. That point often receives multiple strikes of lightning in the course of a Storm so stay away from something that has already been struck by lightning. Tall buildings, such as the Empire State Building, often receive numerous lightning strikes during a storm. How far away can thunder be heard? Thunder is the crash and rumble associated with lightning. It is caused by the explosive expansion and contraction of air heated by the stroke of lightning. This results in sound waves that can be heard easily 6 to 7 miles, 9.7 to 11.3 kilometers, away. Occasionally such rumbles can be heard as far away as 20 miles, 32.2 kilometers. The sound of great claps of thunder is produced when intense heat and the ionizing effect of repeated lightning occurs in a previously heated air path. This creates a shock wave that moves at the speed of sound. How did lightning cost New York City a billion dollars? A lightning stroke took out a major New York City power line in July 1977. Resulting in a blackout that lasted for an entire day. The looting and losses to businesses, in addition to the repairs needed, were estimated to cost the city about $1 billion. Why does lightning flicker? Once the path is established through which the electricity of the lightning will flow, the same path will be followed for a number of milliseconds before it breaks down. Several strokes of lightning each lasting millionths of a second will be interspersed with brief pauses lasting for periods of time just as short. The result is a flickering effect. What is St. Elmo's fire?
St. Elmo's fire has been described as a corona from electric discharge produced on high. Grounded metal objects, chimney tops, ship masts, and aircraft wing tips. Since it often occurs during thunderstorms, the electrical source may be lightning. Another description refers to this phenomenon as weak static electricity. Formed when an electrified cloud touches a high, exposed point. Molecules of gas in the air around this point become ionized and glow. The name originated with sailors who were among the first to witness the display of spear-like or tufted flames on the tops of their ship's masts. Saint Elmo, a corruption of Saint Ermo, is the patron saint of sailors, so they named the fire after him. How tall can thunderstorm clouds be? Even a fairly average thunderstorm has a height of more than 20,000 feet, 6,000 meters. With the tallest storms being reported at over 70,000 feet, 21,000 meters. What are the requirements for a storm to be considered a severe thunderstorm? In order for it to be categorized as severe a thunderstorm must have winds exceeding 58 miles. 93 kilometers per hour and slash or have tornadoes or large hail, or be likely to generate tornadoes or large hail. The National Weather Service issues thunderstorm warnings. Based on the potential for storms to become severe. Are there ways I can anticipate a tornado? Tornadoes are hard to predict with any certainty. And even meteorologists can only issue tornado advisories when conditions are right. Some people believe that hail, wind, or lightning will always precede a tornado, but that is not always the case. Though large hailstones and other inclement weather do often occur beforehand. Another belief is that if you observe the readings on a barometer suddenly dropping, you can expect a tornado to soon form. This is not an accurate method of prediction, either. Such air pressure drops can occur hours or days before an actual tornado hits. The best strategy is to simply listen closely to weather forecasts during bad storms and trust meteorologists to issue warnings when the conditions merit caution. Do tornadoes strike in countries other than the United States and Canada? Yes, but the United States keeps the best records on tornadoes. And so it is difficult to ascertain the frequency and ferocity of twisters in foreign nations. The Canadian prairie experiences significant incidents. But one could say that these are all part and parcel of the North American conditions that are ideal for tornado formation. Other countries that have significant accounts of tornado activity include Great Britain. 
Italy, Western France, Brazil, Argentina, Russia, Bangladesh. China, Northern India, Pakistan, Japan, South Africa, and New Zealand. England experiences a tornado about once every year and a half, and Australia probably has more tornadoes than are witnessed. Because many of them likely occur in the outback, where the population is sparse. What is the solar spectrum? The solar spectrum is what results when the sun's light is broken up by raindrops. Ice crystals, or other prisms into its component wavelengths. The shorter wavelengths are in the blue, indigo, and violet spectrum. While the longer wavelengths appear as red, yellow, and orange colors to the human eye. What is the solar spectrum? The solar spectrum is what results when the sun's light is broken up by raindrops. Ice crystals, or other prisms into its component wavelengths. The shorter wavelengths are in the blue, indigo, and violet spectrum. While the longer wavelengths appear as red, yellow, and orange colors to the human eye. What is a rainbow? Rainbows are colorful bands of light that are formed when water particles in the air reflect sunlight. As sunlight enters the drops and droplets, the different wavelengths of colors that compose sunlight are refracted at different wavelengths to produce a spectrum of color. To see a rainbow, you must be standing with the sun behind you and the raindrops in front of you. The sun needs to be less than 42 degrees above the horizon to obtain the correct angle so that the light waves are properly reflected. The light is refracted as it enters a raindrop. Reflects off the inside of the back of the raindrop, and is refracted again as it leaves. What is a rainbow? Rainbows are colorful bands of light that are formed when water particles in the air reflect sunlight. As sunlight enters the drops and droplets, the different wavelengths of colors that compose sunlight are refracted at different wavelengths to produce a spectrum of color. To see a rainbow, you must be standing with the sun behind you and the raindrops in front of you. The sun needs to be less than 42 degrees above the horizon to obtain the correct angle so that the light waves are properly reflected. The light is refracted as it enters a raindrop. Reflects off the inside of the back of the raindrop, and is refracted again as it leaves. What is the order of the colors in a rainbow?
The colors in a rainbow are those of a light spectrum, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, with the warm colors, red, orange, yellow, on the outside. Farthest from the ground, and the cool colors, blue, indigo, violet, closer to the ground. What is the order of the colors in a rainbow? The colors in a rainbow are those of a light spectrum, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, with the warm colors, red, orange, yellow, on the outside. Farthest from the ground, and the cool colors, blue, indigo, violet, closer to the ground. Who discovered how rainbows form? In 1304 a German Dominican monk named Theodoric von Freiburg. 1250-1310, showed that light passing through a large glass globe filled with water would create a rainbow because light waves were bent through refraction, reflection, and dispersion. He speculated that the same process occurs in raindrops, creating natural rainbows. Who discovered how rainbows form? In 1304 a German Dominican monk named Theodoric von Freiburg 1250-1310 showed that light passing through a large glass globe filled with water would create a Rainbow because light waves were bent through refraction, reflection, and dispersion. He speculated that the same process occurs in raindrops, creating natural rainbows. Why do you sometimes see double rainbows? Sometimes rainbows form that have a fainter twin called a supernumerary rainbow. The twin will be bigger and above the first rainbow, and the colors of the bands will be reversed. This occurs when not all of the light is reflected out of the raindrops at once. Some light energy remains, and is reflected within the droplets before emerging as a second rainbow. Why do you sometimes see double rainbows? Sometimes rainbows form that have a fainter twin called a supernumerary rainbow. The twin will be bigger and above the first rainbow, and the colors of the bands will be reversed. This occurs when not all of the light is reflected out of the raindrops at once. Some light energy remains, and is reflected within the droplets before emerging as a second rainbow. Why is it impossible to find a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow?
even if there were a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. You could never reach it because the rainbow moves away from you as you approach it. The rainbow will always be positioned opposite the azimuth of the sun. Why is it impossible to find a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow? Even if there were a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow, you could never reach it because the rainbow moves away from you as you approach it. The rainbow will always be positioned opposite the azimuth of the sun. Do rainbows ever appear by moonlight? Yes, if there are raindrops in the air, and the moon is full and low on the horizon. The result can be a nighttime rainbow or moonbow. Usually, such a rainbow does not have the vibrant hues of its daytime cousin. Appearing in muted or whitish shades. A moonbow is a rare and stunning sight. Do rainbows ever appear by moonlight? Yes, if there are raindrops in the air, and the moon is full and low on the horizon. The result can be a nighttime rainbow or moonbow. Usually, such a rainbow does not have the vibrant hues of its daytime cousin. Appearing in muted or whitish shades. A moonbow is a rare and stunning sight. Is there such a thing as a monochromatic rainbow? There have, indeed, been rare reports of all red or all white rainbows. Is there such a thing as a monochromatic rainbow? There have, indeed, been rare reports of all red or all white rainbows. What me scattering? German physicist Gustav Adolf Pfeiffer Wilhelm Me. 1868-1957 Discovered how small particles in the atmosphere scatter light waves. Called me scattering, this effect is important to meteorologists. Studying how clouds and haze scatter light, meteorological optics. What me scattering? German physicist Gustav Adolf Pfeiffer Wilhelm Me, 1868-1957 Discovered how small particles in the atmosphere scatter light waves. Called me scattering, this effect is important to meteorologists. Studying how clouds and haze scatter light, 
meteorological optics. How is Mie scattering different from Rayleigh scattering? Mie scattering deals with energy waves by particles larger than the wavelengths of light. While Rayleigh scattering, named after English physicist John William Strutt, third Baron Rayleigh 1842-1919. Deals with how light is scattered by particles smaller than electromagnetic wavelengths. Me scattering can explain things like the reddish color of clouds during a sunset. Scattering at the level of dust and water particles. While Rayleigh scattering explains why the sky is blue, scattering at the molecular level. How is me scattering different from Rayleigh scattering? Me scattering deals with energy waves by particles larger than the wavelengths of light. While Rayleigh scattering, named after English physicist John William Strutt, third Baron Rayleigh 1842 to 1919. Deals with how light is scattered by particles smaller than electromagnetic wavelengths. Me scattering can explain things like the reddish color of clouds during a sunset. Scattering at the level of dust and water particles. While Rayleigh scattering explains why the sky is blue, scattering at the molecular level. What is a bishop's ring? A bishop's ring is a ring usually with a reddish outer edge that is seen around the sun. It is probably due to dust particles in the air, since it is seen after all significant volcanic eruptions. What is a bishop's ring? A bishop's ring is a ring usually with a reddish outer edge that is seen around the sun. It is probably due to dust particles in the air, since it is seen after all significant volcanic eruptions. What is irisation? Sort of a diffused rainbow effect that can produce mother of pearl like colors. Irisation occurs when thin clouds of water vapor, particularly alto cumulus clouds, pass below the sun. What is irisation? Sort of a diffused rainbow effect that can produce mother of pearl like colors. Irisation occurs when thin clouds of water vapor, particularly alto cumulus clouds, pass below the sun. When are you most likely to see sprites and blue jets? The best chance to see one of these brief, strange lights is in the middle of the night.
when you are near a strong thunderstorm and far away from the light pollution of a city or town. The storm should be more than 100 miles, 161 kilometers away, but no more than 300 miles, 482 kilometers distant. Estimate the height of the storm clouds. Then multiply that by 8 to get the approximate altitude where the sprites and blue jets may appear. Sprites may appear as reddish, orange, white, or even greenish flashes. Blue jets are even harder to see, but you are more likely to view them if the storm includes hail. What are water spouts? Often associated with tropical cyclones, water spouts are tornadoes that can form over a body of water. Instead of sucking up dust and debris, the funnel is visible because of the water it carries. While they tend to be weaker than tornadoes, they can still be lethal and have been known to destroy small boats and cause damage to larger vessels. The most common place to find water spouts in the United States is off the coast of southern Florida. How is me scattering different from Rayleigh scattering? Me scattering deals with energy waves by particles larger than the wavelengths of light. While Rayleigh scattering, named after English physicist John William Strutt, third Baron Rayleigh 1842 to 1919. Deals with how light is scattered by particles smaller than electromagnetic wavelengths. Me scattering can explain things like the reddish color of clouds during a sunset. Scattering at the level of dust and water particles. While Rayleigh scattering explains why the sky is blue, scattering at the molecular level. Do rainbows ever appear by moonlight? Yes, if there are raindrops in the air, and the moon is full and low on the horizon. The result can be a nighttime rainbow or moonbow. Usually, such a rainbow does not have the vibrant hues of its daytime cousin. Appearing in muted or whitish shades. A moonbow is a rare and stunning sight. What is a bishop's ring? A bishop's ring is a ring usually with a reddish outer edge that is seen around the sun. It is probably due to dust particles in the air, since it is seen after all significant volcanic eruptions. What is lightning? Lightning is an electrical discharge occurring in the atmosphere. It comes in many forms and the manner in which it works is only now becoming fully understood.
What are the two forms of cloud to ground lightning? Cloud to ground, CG, strokes of lightning come in negative and positive forms. Negative CGS, which make up about 95% of all such lightning strokes, occur when the ground becomes positively charged. A positive CG does the opposite, and the ground becomes negatively charged. Positive CGS tend to have more power and longer strike time, thus. They are more likely to cause damage and are blamed for starting more forest fires. Is it a good idea to open windows and doors so that air pressure is equalized inside a house? There is a long-standing myth that when a tornado is near a home it lowers the air pressure outside so much that the higher interior pressure in a house will cause it to explode. This is not true, tornadoes damage and rip apart houses. Simply by virtue of wind speeds and the debris they blow about. Opening doors and windows increases the possibility that flying objects will enter the home and possibly hit those hiding inside. Who first photographed a sprite? In 1989, while experimenting with low-light video cameras for use in high-altitude rockets, University of Minnesota scientists Robert Nemzek, John Winkler, and Robert Franz accidentally captured images of sprites. This quickly piqued the interest of NASA scientists at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama who managed to record more examples of sprites. Later successes of taking pictures or video of sprites came from Walter Lyons, who filmed over 240 sprites on July 7, 1993, and Davis Sintman and Eugene Westcott of the University of Alaska, who used a NASA aircraft to film sprites that same month. What is irisation? Sort of a diffused rainbow effect that can produce mother of pearl like colors. Irisation occurs when thin clouds of water vapor, particularly alto cumulus clouds, pass below the sun. What is a steam devil? In the Arctic, and, less often, Antarctic, or any other place where conditions are right. Cold air passing over warm areas of water can cause steam to rise. And when a whirlwind sweeps in at the same time, this steam or fog forms small steam devils. Are there other types of tornado like whirlwinds? Certainly. Smoke from forest fires and ash and steam from volcanoes can 
often stir about in vortices that look like weak tornadoes. What are dust devils? These columns of brown, dust-filled air, which can rise dozens of feet, are not as evil as the name suggests. They are caused by warm air rising on dry, clear days. Winds associated with dust devils can reach up to 60 miles. 96.5 kilometers per hour and cause some damage. There have been reports of dust devils as tall as 5,000 feet, 1,500 meters. They are generally not as destructive as tornadoes and usually die out pretty quickly. Though some have been known to displace as much as 50 tons, 4,500 kilograms, of dust and light debris. One of the biggest dust devils ever recorded was seen in Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah. It was hundreds of feet tall, and it continued on its way for about 40 miles, 65 kilometers. Does thunder cause milk to go sour? No, this is an old wives' tale. It may have stemmed from the fact that thunderstorms occur in times of heat and humidity. Which are conditions that, in themselves, can turn milk sour. What causes thunder? Thunder is created when lightning rapidly heats a section of air. As the air expands, it compresses. Releasing the energy as a sound wave that we hear as a loud boom or clap of thunder. Where is the best place to hide from a tornado if I'm outdoors? If there is no other shelter around, storm experts usually recommend that you find a trench or ditch if a tornado is approaching and you don't have time to get to a tornado shelter or basement. It is not a good idea to hide under a freeway overpass. As debris can still easily blow inside and prove deadly. Some people believe that you are safer if you are in a mountain valley. Because the mountains will block tornadoes. Actually, tornadoes have swept through valleys, and they have even touched on mountain peaks. Tornadoes have been recorded in the Teton Wilderness area at elevations of more than 10,000 feet, 3,000 meters. And during the super tornado outbreak of 1974 many tornadoes struck high areas of the Appalachians. There is also a myth that standing near a river is a safe place to be during a tornado warning. Again, there have been a number of incidents during which tornadoes have been spotted near. Or even crossing, streams and rivers as big as the Mississippi and Missouri. It is not unheard of to learn of boats that have been sunk while sailing down a river when a tornado struck.
what me scattering? German physicist Gustav Adolf Fiefer Wilhelm Me, 1868-1957 Discovered how small particles in the atmosphere scatter light waves. Called Me scattering, this effect is important to meteorologists. Studying how clouds and haze scatter light, meteorological optics. What are some cloud-to-space forms of lightning that are not considered to be true lightning? There are four types of electrical phenomena that have been observed that are not really lightning but still involve fascinating atmospheric displays called transient luminous events or TLEs, they are usually seen during storms. They are sometimes called cloud-to-space lightning, though they do not actually originate within clouds. The first scientific paper on these phenomena was published in 1886, but scientists were not very interested in the subject until more recently, as photographic images became increasingly available. One sprites, often reddish lights appearing above thunderstorms for very brief periods of time. Sprites look kind of like jellyfish, they have a blob of light on top and numerous tendrils descending downward. Sprites can shoot 55 to 60 miles, about 90 to 95 kilometers up into the atmosphere, reaching the ionosphere, and extend 100 miles, 161 kilometers, across. They are very difficult to see, and for that reason were not reliably recorded until the 1980s. Two blue jets, blue lightning that emerges from the tops of thunderstorm clouds at speeds of about 62 miles 100 kilometers per hour meteorologists still do not fully understand what causes blue jets three elves a short name for a very long-winded description elves are emissions of light and very low frequency VLF, Perturbations from Electromagnetic Pulse, EMP, Sources Appearing as giant rings that expand up to 200 miles, 320 kilometers, in diameter. Elves exist in the upper atmosphere at elevations of 55 to 60 miles, 90 to 95 kilometers. Even more short-lived than sprites, they last about one one-thousandth of a second. Four tigers, first observed on January 20, 2003. This newest atmospheric light phenomenon has still not been adequately explained by scientists. Tiger stands for transient ionospheric glow emission in red and were first observed with the use of an infrared video camera over the Indian Ocean by Elon Ramon. An Israeli astronaut aboard the space shuttle Columbia, which later exploded, killing the crew. The tigers that Ramon observed occurred as bright flashes when there was no thunderstorm activity nearby. Which month is the most dangerous for tornadoes in the United States? According to one study, May is the most dangerous month for tornadoes in the United States.
with an average of 329, while February's average is the safest with only 3. In another study the months December and January were usually the safest. And the months having the greatest number of tornadoes were April, May, and June. In February, tornado frequency begins to increase. February tornadoes tend to occur in the central Gulf states. In March the center of activity moves eastward to the southeastern Atlantic states, where tornado activity peaks in April. In May the center of activity is in the southern plain states. In June this moves to the northern plains and Great Lakes area, into western New York. The most costly outbreak of tornadoes occurred in May 1999, when at least 74 tornadoes touched down in less than 48 hours in Oklahoma and Kansas. Including an F5 on the outskirts of Oklahoma City causing $1.1 billion in damage. How loud is thunder? A clap of thunder can be as loud as 120 decibels, abbreviated DBA, which is as loud as the noise at a rock concert, a chainsaw, or a pneumatic drill. What is the solar spectrum? The solar spectrum is what results when the sun's light is broken up by raindrops, ice crystals, or other prisms into its component wavelengths. The shorter wavelengths are in the blue, indigo, and violet spectrum, while the longer wavelengths appear as red, yellow, and orange colors to the human eye. Is there such a thing as a monochromatic rainbow? There have, indeed, been rare reports of all red or all white rainbows. What are the stages of a thunderstorm? Thunderstorms have three stages, cumulus, mature, and dissipation. In the cumulus stage, warm, humid air near the ground is pushed upwards by strong thermals. Or by the collision of air masses coming in from several directions at once. As this moist air rises, it cools and the heat that is released enters the surrounding air. Causing convection that, in turn, causes more air to rise. A loop that feeds off itself causes a rapid increase in cloud formation. Temperature differences between lower and higher altitude, and rainfall. The storm reaches its second stage, the mature stage. When air has reached its cap and is not rising any farther. At this point, cumulonimbus clouds become cumulonimbus incus, thunderheads. With water droplets freezing at the top, thawing into rain as they descend. As the mixture of water, ice, and wind becomes more turbulent, an electrical charge builds up. 
aligning the ice crystals within the clouds until a bolt of lightning is discharged. This happens repeatedly until the storm weakens in the dissipation stage. What is a gust nato? Seen near thunderstorm outflows, a gust nato is a weak vortex that does not touch the clouds. Gust nados usually do little more damage than breaking some tree branches and overturning lawn furniture. What is a land spout? A land spout is, technically, a tornado, albeit a very weak one. Land spouts generally form from non-supercell storms, despite tending to be less strong than other tornadoes. They have been known to cause fatalities and should still be avoided at all costs. Who discovered how rainbows form? In 1304 a German Dominican monk named Theodoric von Freiburg. 1250-1310, showed that light passing through a large glass globe filled with water would create a rainbow because light waves were bent through refraction, reflection, and dispersion. He speculated that the same process occurs in raindrops, creating natural rainbows. What is a thunderstorm? Thunderstorms are localized atmospheric phenomena that produce heavy rain. Thunder and lightning, and sometimes hail. They are formed in cumulonimbus clouds, big and bulbous, that rise many miles into the sky. Most of the southeastern United States has over 40 days of thunderstorm activity each year. And there are about 100,000 thunderstorms across the country annually. Why is it impossible to find a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow? even if there were a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. You could never reach it because the rainbow moves away from you as you approach it. The rainbow will always be positioned opposite the azimuth of the sun. How do thunderstorms make our planet habitable? Thunderstorms, of course, usually bring rain or other precipitation with them. Which is needed for life on Earth. But other rainstorms can do this as well. What makes thunderstorms particularly unique and important is their role in heat convection. Thunderstorms move warm air from lower elevations to upper elevations. The difference in temperatures between ground level and the top of thunderstorm clouds can be as much as 200 degrees Fahrenheit 95 degrees Celsius. 
Causing this air and temperature circulation helps cool our planet by as much as 20 degrees Fahrenheit, 9 to 10 degrees Celsius. Without thunderstorms, therefore, we would already be experiencing global warming. On a scale twice as bad as scientists are forecasting because of climate change. Because of their unusual what was the yellow bubble lightning seen in 1991? And Bristol, England, two girls playing frisbee in 1991 encountered a bizarre yellow bubble of energy. It came in contact with them. And both received what felt like an electric shock that threw them to the ground. They lost their breaths for a moment, and upon recovering, ran home and told authorities. No one ever figured out what they saw, but it might have been an unusual form of ball lightning. Behavior, in the past some people have associated them with spirits or other supernatural events. Ball lightning can wander in and out of rooms, usually vanishing harmlessly. But sometimes leaving holes in windows or doors.